Hello, it's Mike. NoStressMike.com. Uh, just been into the eye doctor, so my eyes still kind of dilated. So the light's still a little sensitive to me. But uh, anyway, uh, I was thinking, you know, uh, I've I've been in wars and uh, uh, civil wars, not a, a world war or nothing like that, but uh, I've been in all kinds of wars, small little dinky ones and, you know, up to the bigger ones. Uh, but I was wondering, now I'm in the United States, matter of fact, I'm in Topeka right now, but uh, I was thinking, man, if, uh, you know, right now, the United States looks really weak, and uh, I'm not expecting anything soon, but um, uh, one thing that I've noticed is a lot of times uh, there are wars, and we're not told about them. And uh, so it's funny how you're being in a war and you don't even know about it. And uh, uh, we've gone through with this virus thing. It's just like a war. Uh, I mean, they, uh, uh, in a war, they want you to stay home. Uh, they don't want gatherings. They don't want people talking. Um, uh, and when it's civil wars, they sure don't want anybody. They want to keep everybody just completely separated. So then you think you're the only one that thinks everything's crazy when, you know, everybody's thinking the same thing, but you're, you're, you're kept in your own little world. And, um, I say, so, and I've, I've seen that, uh, not so much in Vietnam. I mean, I, that was, I was in the thick of the war, but, uh, um, I've been in revolutions where a lot of times you don't even know, uh, well, I was in Venezuela when it started. You could tell right when it started, you knew it was. And um, it's really weird. Venezuela, matter of fact, talk about Venezuela a little bit. Uh, uh, the only way they're able to control the people was to control the food. Uh, that's why it's, they're having such a hard time. Uh, the, and when you're in the cities, it's really tough. Because you're dependent on the, the government to give you water. Uh, you have shelter because you're in the city and uh, food. And uh, the only way that you can get food is go to the store and buy it. And so uh, they limit the stores um, on food because uh, people with the money are now spending all their money for the food because they they know things are bad and uh, they got money so then they buy up all the food that's what makes the shortages and uh, uh, then so what happens they stay short on food once they get short it stays short and uh, that's why I was watching what was going on here, kind of like the toilet paper. See how the toilet paper, everybody, for some reason, I don't know why, but they started going after the toilet paper. And uh, But it, they were able to get caught up. But uh, this is what happens with the food. And now the United States is being as big as it is. Uh, all the food is in semis uh, moving along the highways. Uh, they're, they stock the stores and that's where you hear about three days the stores can be empty and uh, that's the ones that uh, the ones that empty them are the ones that still have money and um, that's why uh, prepping the idea is to get ahead 
Now, I'm not sure how that works when you're in the city. Even in Vietnam, I was out in the jungle. I mean, I wasn't in Saigon or any of the big cities. So I don't know what they did. And um, uh, now World War II, uh, here in the United States, they had shortages uh, uh, of, of food. And uh, I think uh, they, um, they had coupons. And you use the coupons, and that's why when I was in uh, Cuba, uh, you know, they're starving over there, too. And they, they, I don't know about now, I was there 20 years ago. And uh, <clears throat> after the Russia pulled out, they didn't have anything. And uh, communists loved to control food. And they had coupon books. And the thing is, when... Uh, uh, you snitch on people uh, for whatever reason and a, a good well Cuba uh, if you weren't licensed if you didn't have a license to talk to foreigners you couldn't talk to me that's why I had a hard time finding anybody to talk to and then I find somebody to speak English and so it was very difficult like I say I was there 10 days and lost 11 pounds and uh, so and I had the money uh, it's just the idea of trying to find the food and um, find the people that would uh, give me the food. Well, I had to pay, but, but uh, if they don't have food, they can't, you know, they can't sell it to you. So, uh, but the, and I say they use coupon books. People would stand in line for uh, chicken, stand in line for beef, and you know, by the time you get up in front of the line, if they have any left, and you get it, if they don't have anything left, well, then they just close the shop, and then you got to come back tomorrow and stand in line. And uh, so it was really kind of weird. And uh, I'm trying to think how is all that going to work uh, here in the United States? Um, how um, how are they going to do that? Uh, the cities, I'm, I'm, it's easy to control the cities. I mean, that's no big deal. Uh, in the, Even if you're a, a prepper and out in the country, it's going to be a little tough. It's just a matter of time when people are going to get out to where you are. And so, uh, that, so that's going to be really, really tough. Uh, but I, so I don't quite understand what's going to happen if, uh, like I say, China or Russia uh, would get into it with them if they see, well, you know, the United States looks a little weak right now and uh, what's going to happen. Now, uh, uh, military always gets fed. I mean, that's why in every war you, they always have the people that are ready to fight because they're the ones that got food. And um, so, uh, and even in revolution, uh, I say, have been uh, the southern part of Mexico. They were having a revolution. I didn't even know about it. I didn't even know about it till you know I was there and I started talking to people, and then that's when I found out about it. I mean, it wasn't a, a lot of shooting and stuff like that. It was a different kind of revolution. And then uh, Guatemala, it was in Guatemala when it was having its revolution. And uh, uh, what they did is they uh, uh, kept the, the city people under control. And it was hard to get around, uh, but it was mountains. You gotta remember it's mountains, there's not that many roads and stuff like that. So it was a, a little different. And um, uh, at that time, uh, they have to keep the businesses running. Uh, they have to get, see what happens when the people don't have food. Now they have even more problems. So uh, they do keep the food coming. Uh, they're just, they handpick who's going to get the food. Uh, not everybody gets the food. I uh, say in, uh, in Cuba, I thought it was kind of odd that some people had the nice houses, some had trashy houses, and some had food, and some didn't have food. So it's just, you know, in, in communism, and that's kind of what's going on, socialism, communism, uh, when you're 
in the upper part, you have all that stuff. You have gasoline, you have food, uh, you have shelter. A lot of times they, they're getting in, um, uh, what do you call it, gated communities. And uh, so, because, you know, they protect them, them, themselves. You know, if you're not one of them, well, then you got to be one of the, the other ones. So, and so, but it's got me kind of curious uh, here in the United States, what are they going to do? And like I say, I'm out here, you know, in the center of the United States, so, you know, I don't know how that's going to work, you know, compared to, uh, you know, like New York. I don't even know if you can grow enough food in New York. Um, and then even, even outside the city, uh, you know, I don't know how they can do that. It's just... But like I say, I've never been up that area. Maybe they got good growing, but I doubt it. But maybe they do. And uh, but uh, it's making me think. And I don't think the time to think about it is once we get into war, uh, whether it's war from the outside or, like I say, the, things get crazy here. You know, they you don't know kind of what's going on here. They just do more, and more all the time. I know uh, big corporations are what's keeping everything going now, and uh, and they're putting out all the, the small businesses, all the small businesses they can. And uh, I've been, I've done that already. Uh, you know, when I was in the oil business, they wanted the small producers out, and uh, they got their way of doing things. And then in the restaurant business, uh, not only me but my my cousin we had two large restaurants that were there for over 50 years and uh, they just put the pressure on you and um, I say it's it's tough they can get you out of business if they want and then now like you say with all these this virus thing they put out all kinds of small businesses so uh, and they're gonna be kind of picky on who they let back in, and uh, the big businesses want to, they want to stay in and keep the little guys out. So I'm not quite sure. So I'm still still thinking on how all this stuff is going to work. But anyway, this is Mike, nostressmike.com.